In my previous video, I shared the basic navigation and explained the interface of Rhinoceros 8 3D software. In this video, I will show you some fundamental functions, such as Boolean array polar to create a jewelry. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Let's work and make a quick ring without thinking too much. So let's start by shaping our ring. But first, let's select our front viewport and click on the circle tools and we type zero on the command to place our ring perfectly on the central axis and type uh, the inner size of our ring. Let's put 17 millimeter for example, and that's the inner shape of our ring. So now uh, we have made our inner ring with our size, we can easily make the outer ring by copying the circle we just made. Click on the circle and press Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to duplicate the circle. Press and hold the shift key on your keyboard and drag the uh, gimbal uh, to the side. If you don't see the uh, gimbal, you can activate it on the bottom by just pressing the gimbal toggle switch and you should be able to see it. I can roughly estimate the thickness of this ring by just uh, looking at it because we know that one square is equal to one millimeter. So in this case, it is roughly about 1.6 millimeter now. If we type distance, we can measure this and see that it measure about 1.6 millimeter now. Now we can switch our view to perspective mode and we can see that our circles are in the same plane. That's really important because we are going to extrude those curves and turn it into a ring. Let's simply do this by going to our toolbar and find the extrude curves function and select straight mode. Then we can select the curves to extrude by selecting both circles and then click on the left mouse button and press enter. It's going to look like this and we are going to have few options where we can choose to extrude on both sides or one side. We can turn it into a solid object, then we can proceed to type uh, the size we need. In this case, we are going to make a 6 mm wide ring and hit enter. If we did everything right, if we change our view to the right side viewport, we can see our ring that takes uh, 6 square, which is equal to 6 mm. In our four viewports, we can see our ring from different angles. Now, let's play around a little bit. Let me show you the boolean function to do a cut into our ring. Let's try to do that by making a copy of our ring first. Select the ring and click on Ctrl C and then Ctrl V on your keyboard. When you click on the ring right now, it will allow you to select between two extrusions, which is the new and old ring we made. Now let's just pick one and let's try to adjust the size by dragging the little green handle on the gimbal uh, to the inside of the ring. After that you can drag the other red handle to make the ring larger. We want to cut just a little bit. Let's switch to our front viewport to have a better angle. We can easily see how much we are cutting from this angle. I want to cut around 0.4 millimeter. It is something around that, because I know that one square represents one millimeter. We have now our two rings and uh, let's find the boolean function in our tools, which is this uh, two sphere icon. Click on the drop down arrow and select boolean difference or just type it uh, on uh, the command line. It's the best method in Rhino. Now we can select our surface and we start by selecting the surface we want to subtract from and then the surface to cut with. And this is what we get at the end. Alright, I have made a quick sketch of a ring and let me show you how to make this ring in Rhino 8. Again, let's start by making the inner ring with our circle tool and our front viewport selected. Type 0 to place our shape and hit enter. For the size of the ring, let's make it at 19 mm for example. Now let me show you another method to make the outer ring which is called the offset function. We want to offset to 1.8 mm just like the dimension from our sketch. Let's search for the offset function on the command. Select the curves we want to offset, type the dimension and just click the left mouse button. 
Now we can extrude our curves. Let's switch our view to perspective mode first. Let's go to our toolbar to search for the surface function and select straight. Let's choose the solid option and this time let's select the uh, both side option as well. We want to make a ring of the size of 6 mm and because we selected to extrude on both sides, it means that we have to set it to 3 mm to make a 6 mm ring. We get something like this and now let's replicate these types of triangle objects from the sketch. Let's switch to uh, the front viewport. We can achieve this with the control point curves tool. Let's turn on the uh, grid snap function and play around and draw curves like that. We adjust the curves with the uh, curves edit point tool and select which curves to edit. It created a point control that let us adjust our curves. Let's turn off the grid snap to move freely and try to replicate the sketch. And once we get the result we want, we can turn off the points edit function. Now we want to mirror these curves to the other side. Let's select the object we want to mirror. Press enter then select the end point of our curve and hold shift then drag up and release it. We created two separated lines that are connected together and we can join them together to create a single curve by just typing join on the command line. The next step is to cut down our ring with the uh, curved line we created. We are going to do this with a powerful function called wire cut. Press enter and select the uh, wire cutting curves and then select the object to cut and press enter again. If we go back uh, to the perspective mode, we can see the actual cut we made with the uh, wire cutting function and it created a new isolated object. Now uh, we can play around the new object and uh, make it larger by sliding into other direction and make something close to what we want. All right, let me show you another function that we use a lot in Rhino, which is called the fillet edge. Select the two lines on the top and let's set a uh, radius of 0.3, then double press enter. Let's also do this for uh, the edge on the outside, but this time let's set at a less rounded edge of 0.1, for example. Do the same thing on the other side as well. Let's adjust the uh, size of our objects until we are satisfied with the looks of it. Now we want to have this object all around the ring just like the sketch. We can achieve that with the array polar function. But before we do this, we are going to copy this object and go back and place it again on the initial ring. Now uh, we have an object on top of our ring instead of having a ring with some holes on it. Let's use the array polar function, select the object we want to array, press enter. Now uh, we are going to place a point on the center of our ring so it can copy our object and place it all over our ring. Or uh, we can just type zero on the command. This is the reason why it is important to place our object on the center of the axis. So it will make it easier for us when we use uh, certain functions. Enter the number of objects we want and uh, let's make eight objects and double press enter. This is what we get. We can do the same thing with uh, every object we create. Let's make, uh, for example, a small sphere on the top and do the same thing with array polar function. Congratulations, you have completed this course and learned a few fundamental functions for beginners. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos.